I think it's time to come back. What's going on, Canes fans? That's right, we are back. Finally, after a two-month break, I think it's time to finally get back into posting some videos again. Now, before you get too excited, I'm not planning any live streams, at least for now. I need to ease back into this thing. Uh, as many of you know, uh, my younger brother passed away unexpectedly on December 16th, so it's been about two months I took a step back, took a break from social media, from posting on YouTube, doing all that stuff, and uh, I just needed to to clear my head, you know, and uh, I won't lie, I won't sugarcoat it, it has messed me up a lot, uh, it's been a struggle, it's not been easy in any way, but uh, I have been keeping up with Miami Hurricanes football, of course, because you know I eat, sleep, and breathe it. So what I wanted to do is, you know, I felt like this was the kind of video I needed to get dressed up for, for multiple reasons, because it's my first video back after two months, so we gotta, you know, gotta make a good impression, and uh, also to celebrate, of course, Josh Gaddis getting the boot, no longer offensive coordinator. Now, this is gonna be old stuff, guys. This is stuff that, you know, everybody's already probably discussed to death, but I like to run my mouth and... I want to give my two cents on it. So we're just going to hang out, chat for a few minutes. I know this is weird, right? Like uh, Coop's on the couch. Like we might do a new series or something that involves this. You know, I don't know yet. Got some crazy things planned for this year. Trust me. But this one's going to be kind of tame, super chill. I don't have notes or anything like that. Honestly, I want to talk about Josh Gaddis, Kevin Steele, and I want to just give my opinion on the situation. I'm not going to talk about potential candidates, so to say, or anything like that. It's not going to be a full breakdown. I just, I've missed you guys. Uh, you guys are my friends, my family, and I know I've been MIA. So let, let's hang out and let's chat for a few minutes. And I want to start with Kevin Steele. I mean, who really saw that one coming? I think that was kind of by surprise. Not many people expected it. Uh, nobody was talking about Kevin Steele getting fired or leaving to go to Alabama with Nick Saban. But, you know, uh, I don't blame him. I don't think that Kevin Steele was really a good fit for the South Florida area. Uh, and I'll touch more on that here in just a bit. Uh, but I was never that big of a fan of Kevin Steele. If, if you go back and watch my previous videos, anytime we brought up Kevin Steele, I was like, eh, he's okay. I mean, I feel like he was kind of out of his prime a bit. I think he's in his mid-60s. He's like 64 years old. I'm not downplaying his resume, anything that he has accomplished. Uh, and I'm not saying that everything on defense was purely his fault at Miami last year. Uh, I mean, there were talent issues. There, there was depth issues. Uh, other position coaches, you know, go into that. So it wasn't just Kevin Steele, but he didn't have the best year at Miami. Let's all be honest here. Uh, now, I will say that I think that Kevin Steele will probably succeed under Nick Saban at Alabama. And, you know, Steele's background with his coaching since the 80s primarily revolves around the Southeastern Conference. So this is a move that really did just make sense for him and not too many Canes fans are going to miss him after Middle Tennessee put up 45 on Miami no matter who you want to point the finger at right that's just the honest truth but it brings up an interesting scenario here where does Mario promote from within aka Charlie Strong I mean look at Charlie Strong's resume he's been a, a DC at, at South Carolina Florida uh, he has a background being a head coach at multiple schools, or does Mario maybe conduct a, a nationwide search? Um, does he want to look at more options? Uh, do we go for an up-and-coming guy? Uh, the Super Bowl is about to be over. Do we look to the NFL? It's really hard to say what Mario is going to be thinking with this defensive coordinator hire because I don't think that he would have saw this coming either. I don't know when contact was made, but I don't think that I think this was kind of out of left field for Mario. So I don't think he was planning on hiring an OC and a DC 
in 2023. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Uh, but let me know what you guys want to see down in the comment section when it comes to Kevin Steele. Now, again, I'm not doing a full breakdown in this video on who my potential candidates would be, who I think are realistic, wish list, you know, all that stuff. But those are some videos that can be coming up soon because we like to do that stuff. Uh, but I'm honestly not super sad that Kevin Steele is gone. I, I, I felt like, like I said, he was a little bit out of his prime. And I, I don't think he could connect as well with the players, at least at Miami anyways, which brings me back around to what I mentioned at the beginning. I don't think Kevin Steele was really a South Florida fit. He didn't really have a background extensively in the state of Florida. He's not from Florida. And guys can be successful if they're not from Florida. Honestly, I get frustrated when we seem to be so laser focused on guys that have ties to Miami and South Florida. I honestly really don't care. But I do think that with Kevin Steele, it's a little bit deeper than just coaching. I think that Kevin, guys, not everybody loves the beaches in sunshine and, you know, the partying and, and all this stuff, which hopefully they're not doing a lot of partying. They're here to work. But I'm just saying that South Florida vibe, that lifestyle is not for everyone. And I think that Kevin Steele probably really didn't enjoy himself as much in South Florida as he thought he would. So as soon as he had an opportunity to run back to the SEC, he took it. Which brings me to the next guy. Mm. Josh Gaddis. Now, uh, the reason why this ties in is because I believe it was the exact same thing with Josh Gaddis. Uh, like I said, sometimes this goes deeper than coaching, guys. There were obvious blatant issues when it comes to the offensive side of the ball with Miami, with the low points per game, just poor offensive performance. And just like with Steele, you know, you can blame depth issues and you, you can point the finger squarely at Josh Gaddis. However you want to do it, the offense did not perform very well. And a lot of people wanted to see a change at the position. I think that Josh Gaddis didn't really fit that South Florida vibe. I think he, he came down to South Florida and it just wasn't a fit. I don't think he got along well with the players. I don't think he got along well with the coaches. Guys, the writing is on the wall. If you want to say, Coop, you don't know what you're talking about. I talk to players. I talk to some of the coaches. I'm telling you, Gaddis just didn't really mesh well down in South Florida just all around, all together. Just wasn't really a good fit. So, of course, not that many people are um, very upset about that one with Josh Gaddis leaving. I, for one, am, am happy. Uh, there are... However, some downsides to losing both our DC and OC for 2023. I mean, for starters, with Gaddis being gone, this is going to be Tyler Van Dyke's third offensive coordinator since he's been at Miami. So he's going to have to learn yet another offense. Now, I understand the ideas that this one will be better, but that's what we say every single time. So it is kind of tough on him. Um, when it comes to the defensive coordinator as well, just kicking back for a moment, this is a new OC and new DC after just one year with a new head coach. And really, honestly, it's tough to view that as a good thing. That's, that's a very scary thing because just think about this. Guys, I don't want to dive too deep into this, but we have no baseline now for 2023. I mean, a, a, a brand new offensive coordinator, a brand new defensive coordinator. We had something to kind of gauge things off of from 2022. And then now we kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you have to set the bar high. You do have some expectations, but you can't completely compare it to 2022. There's going to be a new offense and a new defense. So that makes it kind of tough in 2023 to really know what to expect. I can tell you what I'm expecting. Uh, nothing. I, I am throwing my expectations out the window truly for this season, and I'm expecting nothing. I'm just hoping that things are better than they were in 2022. But what I'm expecting, nothing. I'm expecting nothing. But anyways, back to our offensive coordinator. Um, obviously, the front runners appear to be Scott Frost and Jason Candle. Scott Frost is still on the table, even though some people are saying he's not. Frost is an option, and Candle is an option. And I really think that if Mario had his say, his choice, 
I think that Jason Candle is probably the number one guy. And I don't think it's too far-fetched, honestly. I mean, I understand to go from head coaching to offensive coordinator, but he's the head coach at Toledo. He can literally make more as an offensive coordinator, so he has less responsibilities, and it also opens up even more possibilities for him in the future. So really, truly, it makes sense, unless he's afraid of coming to Miami and killing his career, which does happen for some coaches. It's it's, like it's one or the other, right? It's either Miami is a stepping stone or it's a place to kill your career. I wouldn't start my coaching career at Miami. I can tell you that right now. People make jokes, Coop for OC, Coop for... No. Heck no, it would not start at the University of Miami. I can tell you that. But, you know, I would I would be okay with Candle. I don't think I would have any issues. It's going to be interesting because, you know, so many people have always said that Mario handcuffs his, his OC and DC. Um, so we'll see. Mario really wants to run a power spread type of offense. So we'll see what happens. Don't expect no matter who the hire is to come in and all of a sudden run air raid at Miami. That's what the fans want. That's not necessarily what Mario wants. And I'm going to go ahead and fill you in. Mario doesn't care what you want. And I I know you guys, it's going to get some backlash. You guys are going to be like, Coop, Mario has to care. We're the fans. We buy the tickets. We buy the merch. We show the support. Mario is running the show. You have to understand that he's recruiting a specific set of players a, a, a certain way, and there's a type of football he wants to be played here at the University of Miami, and it's not necessarily what you want it to be. And that's that's not a, a bad thing, right? Because he's going to be the one who is calling the shots and making these decisions. So um, I just want to say, man, I'm, I'm okay with it. I, I hate that we are replacing an OC and a DC after one year, though. That is very scary. Uh, it is. It's it's kind of a bad place to be in, especially since spring ball is coming up in, in, in like a month. But I think less than a month by the time I post this video. So less than a month away, and Miami does not have an OC or DC, at least, you know, according to what's been put out there. Unless, you know, I, I know talks have happened behind the scenes for weeks, months. Uh, Gaddis was basically told that he was going to be shown the door uh, in December. So, you know, don't let the, the stuff that gets posted fool you. He's known for a while. So Mario's had some time to, you know, communicate with some potential OCs and whatnot. But not everyone wants to come to Miami. That's one thing us Miami fans are bad about, myself included, is this isn't a dream job for everyone, guys. We don't just have the pick of anyone that we want. Even though money talks, again, some people are scared to come to Miami because look at what's happened to a lot of other coaches that have have come here and I mean um, you guys are playing around when you're suggesting Manny Diaz as defensive coordinator like you get you guys are joking right like I see posts all on the Facebook groups and all on Twitter people saying bring back Manny I understand that he was an okay defensive coordinator here at Miami he was pr pretty darn good there for a little bit um, but number one, come on now. That's that's not even realistic. The dude's not going to, bro, no way. He loves Miami, but ain't, ain't no way. That bridge has long been burnt. But I'm just, I'm just curious. So l let me know, you know, your guys' thoughts. Like I said, I'm, I'm not putting a wish list together or anything for this video. I'm not doing a full breakdown. I'm really just ranting and rambling, just kind of saying hello, getting back into the groove of things, and just giving my two cents on Kevin Steele and Josh Gaddis being gone and you know like I said I've kept up with it I know that Garcia ended up changing his mind leaving going to Mizzou it was kind of weird how quick like Garcia was actually in the portal for like one or two days and it was like I'm going to Mizzou but hopefully you know he's successful of course unless we play them then you know don't want him to be successful for that game but you guys know what I mean um so it's just, it, it's been crazy, man. Uh, it's, everybody's foaming at the mouth. Everybody's an insider. Everybody has information on who's been interviewed, who it's going to be, who it's not going to be. And I like the way Mario Cristobal conducts business. I, I'm guessing most people don't. You guys probably don't like it, right? I, I'm a fan of it. He keeps things close to the chest. He's not, you know, all this stuff run comes out at the media, and a lot of times it's just smoke screens. And it's just, you know, he, he doesn't care. Like I said, he doesn't care what the fans' opinions are when it comes to making hires and his interview process and all these different things. He just handles business, man. And I like that. 
I like it. But guys, I think the videos are back. Like I said, n no live streams for now, just because I, I still got you know a lot going on, you know, up here, and um, I'm just kind of taking a break from being live. But as far as videos go, let's let's do some hypotheticals. Let's do some crazy what if videos. Let's do some wish list videos. Let's let's get back in the groove. Let's get back to talking Miami Hurricanes football on this channel. Now, I don't have a clue what this video is going to be titled. I don't know if I'm going to make it something funny and troll about Manny Diaz, or I don't know if it's just going to say my two cents on the OC and DC thing. I really don't know, man. Uh, I don't even know if anything in this video made any sense. But it's just nice to to film again. What do you what do you guys think about the couch, man? Come on, what do you? I, I, we got to do something. I think I, I've had I've had some suggestions. Uh, you know, coop on the couch. Uh, somebody mentioned something about Coop's casting couch. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean. Um, I, I don't know, but it's got thrown around or something. So uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll do something with it. I kind of like this laid back, chill vibe. It, it's kind of cool, man. I, I want to do some different things on the channel in 2023. So anyways, I appreciate you guys for sticking with me, for hanging in there. I promised I'd be back. I told you I didn't know when, but I promised I'd be back. And uh, come on, chop it up with me. I'll respond to as many comments as I can. Let's talk OC and DC, and then I'll get the really fun videos, the wish list, and all that stuff coming up soon. Hey, remember though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family. But at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out, man. I'll see you all in the next one real soon.